Hello everyone. So welcome to part four of the series on how to use AppSheet to manage my online uh, business and sales and stuff. So today we can mostly talk about user experience, which is labeled UX in this case. So we are not going to go down into the customization protocols of all the filtering and all this. So we need to do two things today. Uh, first thing, how do I display the overall uh, sales that have come in through the Google form inside AppSheet itself as a table? And how do I display the overall status that I have? So if I have no status, it should be blank. And once I key into the status, I want to see everything. So I don't care. I want to see everything that is already in progress in this case. So it's not really status. I'll put in progress here just to make things easier. Okay, so let's go back to this now. So this is our so this is our overall, what is that called? Overall sales that have not been uh, assigned at all because if we go to our sales status, it's completely empty. So what, what's the workflow is like? A customer will send a form request and order in. And then once you start to assign this, it will start to show up here. And then you should be able to monitor all of them. So the, the, the brilliant thing about here is that every single customer will only have a single line. And you should go down to yes, 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 yes means they're closed. So that is the basic concept of it. So everything that have four yes, we ignore them and we do not want to look at them again. Okay, so let's go to app sheet. So we have previously import the four different tables here. So the one that the two tables that we really want to focus on is prop two as well as sales status. So these two they're done for, we'll never need to look at them again because we have done the calculation previously. So in this case, let's go uh, to start with prop two, that's easier. So once you go to UX, you can just create a new view and you should get something like uh, sales log over here. So once you start a, a new one, they will actually randomly uh, assign you a view type and the view name should be called log, uh, Proc2. So in this case, I'm going to change it to overall sales log, which is what we have as an overall. So we can have a view of the history. So we are taking the data from Proc2 table itself and we want to use a table. So all these are, are very different for very, very intense data like this. Uh, with a lot of information, I would suggest to use table because that gives you a really good overview of what it is. So let's go to overall sales log and have a look. So in this case, your overall will look somewhat like this where one sales key, because we have uh, changed it to the label as well as the key, it should be displayed first as well as all that other information. So in this case, we have six different customers has already placed their order over here. So we have six different, so it should be exactly the same. And when you click into one of them, you should be greeted by everything that you need to know about them. So what is the sales key? So this uh, order has been placed by Ben with these email addresses uh, on this date and the total order quantity is 142.5 ringgit. So that is the money you need to collect. So this is placed on 5 p.m. And it's the email where you can just click on to email them directly from the app and the phone and postcode and so on. And something wrong with the postcode, we'll, we'll go back and check what happened later. I think there's some conversion issue. But overall, not an issue. We still have the addresses and the item as well as the total price quite easily presented. So in this case, we can also look at this. Something wrong with the postcode again. Most likely because I changed the, uh, the, the name into a postcode just now. So I have to go back and adjust that, no problem at all. Yeah, because it is preserved here nicely. Okay. And yeah, so we have all the things, Jackson, and we have the addresses here nicely. Okay. so. That, that is basically it. So if you want to have an other view, you can go to deck, which of course gives you a completely different view of it. You can go to gallery, which will only display the sales key and you can click in and have a look. You can also go to detail and we will only display everything in detail. But if you have 100 sales, this is a little bit difficult. You can also have maps. I'm going to show you that later. Uh, dashboard, I'm going to go you later. Form is only for entry. Since we do not allow new entries, we'll go to form when we reach these status later. So onboarding, I never actually use. It's actually just a series of people for them to enter. Uh, let's say you enter a company and you need to learn about all these things. So this will bring people through the interface of, you know, all the things that you need to know uh, one by one, something like that. Card also I never use. Uh, very similar to onboarding where you might, you'll be, you'll be uh, greeted with one by one uh, in sequence, basically. So in this case, we're going to go back to table Come on, okay. So, yep. Let's go back. Yeah, that's one. Never mind. <laughs> Let's just uh, refresh this a little bit so we'll see what happens. So yeah, AppSheet still has some 
uh, speed and latency issue when you want to link a Google Sheet over and certain things doesn't get updated in real time, real time. So it still takes some time during the developing process. So once you deploy this, they're fine. Okay, so uh, the other thing you need to change is that I want to put it to the menu. So you can see the position over here refer to the position on the bottom of the app over here. So menu means only when you click this, it will be here. While reference, it will never be directly visible in the app itself and you need to go into something else to refer this to something else. So in this case, if you want to hide something that you would want people to see, let's say something is still in development, you can go under ref, ref, uh, reference and there's also the other, other process of it we're going to go through in I think the part six of the video. Okay, so the other thing you can do in the table, you can actually sort by, let's say, row number timestamp. I want to sort by timestamp. That'll be easy. I also want to group by, um, uh, let's say, what is uh, state. So you always Kuala Lumpur, two order, Malacca, one order. This is one order, one order. So you can also do descending. So if you want to reverse the whole thing upside down, you can also do a count. Let's say how many is there in each state quite easily. If you have a lot of them, this is very useful. And of course, you can call them order. In this case, you do not want to look at the sales key. Maybe I just want to look at the name as well as the total prices that I want to see. So this will allow you to have the name and the prices side by side. Maybe just put another thing called, um, I don't know, postcode maybe. So you're able to see their postcode, their prices and their name. Yeah, now the postcode works already. So yeah, it's, it's funny somehow. Okay, so you can also choose narrow and wide. Uh, it's only a fact when you look at uh, when you go to an uh, iPad, tablet view and so on. So that's basically it for overall sales, quite straightforward, I would say. And I think nothing much that I really need to refer. Every information is kind of straightforward and able to just uh, display out directly. So I'm going to refer all that because I do just want a very straightforward view over here. Okay, so the second one is that you can add another for our uh, sales status over here. Go to UX again, go to add new view and then in this case, go to uh, stale status. Okay, so it's nothing, which is perfectly normal. I just not start a new one because I already have. So uh, in this case, oh, no, not overall in process, sales status. Oh, I don't have that. Okay, I, I don't have that. So let's just create one, isn't it, shall we? So let's just create one. So this is overall sales status, overall status. So Okay, so I want it to be a table, so that is quite data intensive as well. I want to see all of them. I want it to be the menu, and I don't really need any of them. So you realize that suddenly you, just now there's no plus button over here when we go to the overall sales log. Let's go here. Uh, yeah, because when we go to the overall sales log over here, you realize there's no plus button because we're not allowed to edit any of the data. But in this case, overall status, we have a plus button over here, means we can actually add the data in. So let's just try once. So in this case, you can just choose the sales key that you're on. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you a better way later, but now is how you actually um, key in the sales key data. So in this case, I let's go our first sales, which is band. So this is the band's 145.5. So, so maybe I already call the customer. They say that, yes, I have ordered this much. This is the pay. I agree to pay. Please give me your bank number. So you give him the bank number. Yep, I have actually uh, contact the customer and I have confirmed the order, so done. So you can see in the overall status over here, I have one lock of a single customer that I interact with. So what if I want to have another one called a person called Jackson that have confirmed the order and immediately pay me on the spot. So easy, I have done. So it will be out for delivery tomorrow. I'm not going to care, so I'm just going to save. Uh, this is a very role with the Jackson. So yeah, I forgot to change it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, okay. So. So Jackson, okay. So you realize just now that when I key in Ben again, and I want to key in something else, you realize I can't because there's already an entry. So this is the magic of the sales key that I deal with just now. So one customer with a specific order can only be entered once and cannot be entered any, anything later. So, uh, the, so this is not actually the correct way of looking at it. This is more of an overview. And this is how uh, things can transfer from the overall new customer sales into uh, in progress situations. Okay, so same thing here. You can actually just go to sort by. What if I want to sort by confirm order? What if I want to sort by out delivered? Or I want to sort by out for delivery and descending. So that you switch the two, sorry, uh, payment and you can switch them around. So it depends on the situation that you're in. You can also do a group by, you can also do a, 
uh, group aggregate and so on and so forth. So it's the same exact situation overall. So I'm not going to need this, so I'm going to delete it. So the other thing you need to know is uh, a map of new order. So in this case, before uh, we go into slices, I'm just going to show you what map can do. So once you get the, so map in this case, uh, does it work? Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, let's go in again. So the first thing you need to use an app is to go to prop2 and make sure you have a column that is addresses. So what does this do most likely is to actually do a pipe to a Google API and fetch a latitude and longitude uh, of the earth and then it will actually go into a map view. Yeah, it doesn't work, is that right? Yeah, something wrong with the app currently. So So everything worked fine, just after the a map doesn't really work for now. Yeah, but let's create a new one. <laughs> so let so let's just create a task map over here. So just in case, just to make sure that it works. So in this case, the map we want it to be proc two. So we want it also to be the column a map column we addresses. So you can see our uh, one, two, three, four, five orders over here because we have two orders in KL just now. So if you zoom down a little bit, you will realize that this is the exact location in KL that you need to send it to. Don't worry, there are no housing addresses. I choose some of the trading spot for the addresses here. So you can see that this is the exact place we need to send the order in. This is the exact place you want to send the order in. And the magic is if I want to check on them, I just click it in, click it in. And this is, we know everything about the customer over here. And we can just easily call them or email them quite, quite nicely. Okay, so also we can edit their sales key over here and so on and so forth. Okay, so this uh, should bring you a basic concept of how to create a, a user experience table. So today we have gone through just two simple things, how to display a total number of sales as well as everything that is in progress and so on. So how do you do that is that once you structure your data correctly, I'm not too sure, yeah, this is correct. Once you structure the data correctly, once you get your data table right correctly, and do not go to UX before you set this part, you're going to die. Okay, you go to UX, and you add new view, and then you should go to something like this, and you should be able to just, where is it? Yeah, this one. So you should be able to just choose the, the table that you want. In this case is, wait, ah, not this one, not this one, this one. So choose your prop two, and then choose your table, and arrange it however the way that you see the fit and the way that you want to work, okay? So we can also create another one for the status, which is here. I oh, know this is the map, uh, this one. So the status, they are already in progress of delivery, but not yet completed. As well as you can also do a map that will show you where all the orders are located and you can actually individually go in and dive in and what and understand what is their status. Uh, that is the video for now. So thanks for watching part four. We'll see you in the next part. Bye.